Hi everybody! This video discusses symbolism, specifically symbolism in poetry. As you probably know, a symbol is something that represents something else. When talking about literature, however, it's important to distinguish between conventional symbols and contextual symbols, which are sometimes called literary symbols. A conventional symbol is something that is commonly recognized as representing a certain idea. For example, a red rose is commonly represented as, sorry, is commonly recognized as representing love. And the U.S. flag is commonly recognized as representing the United States. These are symbols that large communities of people see as representing an idea or something else. A contextual or literary symbol is a symbol that is specific to a particular literary work. The meaning of a literary symbol or a contextual symbol will depend on how it is developed within the specific work. So in other words, the meaning is dependent upon the context of a literary work that it appears in. I'm going to talk a little bit about how this kind of symbolism works in a poem by Robert Frost. I'm going to begin by just reading the poem. Uh, and as I read it, I'm going to be trying to pay attention to, first of all, what's happening at a literal level. So what's happening in the poem. And then also trying to identify uh, important ideas or perhaps words and phrases uh, that seem to be significant based on how the poem is constructed. So I will begin by reading the poem so you can hear it. Uh, and as I read it, I encourage you to be thinking about the same kinds of things. Acquainted by the Night with, by Robert Frost. I have been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the furthest city light. I have looked down the saddest city lane and passed by the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes, unwilling to explain. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet when far away an interrupted cry came over houses from another street. But not to call me back or say goodbye, and further still, at an unearthly height, one luminary clock against the sky, proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. So, as I said earlier, the first thing I want to do is identify what's happening at a literal level. In the first stanza, uh, we learn that the speaker says he has been acquainted with the night. Uh, literally, this probably means that he's maybe spent a lot of time outside when it's night. Um, but this is an idea and a phrase that maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense just at a literal level. So immediately, as a reader, I think, well, there might be more going on there that I need to think about. Um, as I keep going, he says he's walked out in rain and back in rain and out walk the further city light. So at a literal level, that makes sense. You know, he's gone out walking in the rain and he's, you know, out walked, you know, the light. So he's gone to sort of beyond the city um, and beyond where people live. Uh, in the second stanza, he says he's looked down the saddest city lane. So he's looked down city streets that look sad and he's patched the watchman on his beat and dropped his eyes unwilling to explain. So he's walked by a watchman and not made eye contact and not been sort of willing to explain what he was doing. And then as a reader, that also sort of um, is something that piques my interest because I wonder, well, what does he have to explain or why isn't he willing to explain what he's doing? And then as we keep going, uh, as I'm reading at sort of the literal level, I see that he has stood still, um, and stopped walking when he heard a cry um, that came from another street. And the cry wasn't aimed at him, it was aimed at somebody else. And then also um, he sort of sees a single clock that's proclaiming a time. And then he ends with the same statement he begins with, which is, I have been one acquainted with the night. And as a, read as a reader, I notice that, again, he's using that same phrase and also at the end of the poem, which is a point of emphasis. So I know this must be important. And that original question of sort of what does it mean to be acquainted with the night and what does the night mean um, becomes even sort of more important. So if you sort of look at my notes here, 
just to summarize, I've noticed that there's sort of this repetition of the single line. I have been one acquainted with the night at the beginning and the end. And that repetition um, suggests that night is important. And then also I am sort of stuck wondering, what does it mean to be equated with the night? What does he mean by that? And then I'm also sort of wondering, um, you know, what is he unwilling to explain to the night watchman? Like sort of what is, what is he sort of feeling or experiencing that he doesn't want to explain or maybe that he can't explain? So these are sort of the two things that I immediately notice on my first read through. So based on this, I'm going to spend a little bit more time looking at some of the specific words um, and images to try to get a better sense of what he means by the night, what it might mean to be acquainted with the night, and then also sort of what's going on in his head that he's not really willing to explain. So uh, in the first stanza, I notice a repetition of rain, and which sort of has this dark and sort of gloomy connotations. Um, I notice that he's out walking the further city light, which means, you know, that he's sort of walking into darkness, which seems important and sort of reinforces this, this sort of darkness of the rain and the darkness of the night. And then in the line of the first line of the second stanza, he also talks about that city lane, that street being sad, which seems sort of to me to reinforce that sort of darkness and that gloominess and that sort of somber tone of the poem. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, maybe night has something to do with sort of darkness and gloominess and maybe sadness. Maybe when he says he's equated with the night, he means that he's associated with, he's familiar with um, sort of darkness and what it means to be, or maybe he's, you know, familiar with this sort of feeling of sadness. As I keep going, uh, in the third stanza, I also notice this imagery that has to do with silence and stillness. He says, I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet. And so at this point, I think, well, I think the night, you know, is associated with darkness and sadness, but maybe there's something else going on here, too. Maybe it's not just about, you know, being things being dark and gloomy and sad. Maybe there's more to it. Um, and maybe this sort of silence and this stillness has something to do with that. And then in the next stanza, the fourth stanza, I notice that he talks about how this cry that he hears is not to call him back or say goodbye. So the cry isn't talking to him. He's not really sort of connected to anybody. And then also this image of the one luminary clock, which is also sort of this sort of solitary thing. And um, I look at those and I notice that they seem to have a lot in common with that earlier image of him out walking the further city light in line three. In line three, when he says he out walked the further city light, he was, means that he was sort of living civilization, leaving the city. And then this gets the sort of sense of him being alone and solitary gets reinforced in the fourth stanza when, you know, there's people crying to each other or calling to each other, but they're not calling to him. So he's, you know, disconnected from people. He's sort of disconnected from civilization. Um, and maybe he's, in fact, kind of like the, lumin the one luminary clock. Maybe he is sort of like that clock all alone in the world. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, maybe the night, yes, is sort of representing darkness and sadness and gloominess. Um, but also, maybe it's representing um, loneliness, or solitariness, or a disconnection from other people. So when he says he's acquainted with the night, it means that he knows what it's like to feel sad, he knows what it's like to feel uh, maybe depressed, um, but also he knows what it's like to feel disconnected and alone and cut off from other people. So to walk you through the process that I just took you through, um, the first thing I did is I read for a literal meaning. Uh, so I asked myself what's happening in the poem and what is the reader saying at the literal level? Uh, after I had identified what was sort of happening literally, I also paid attention to things like word choice, word order, and imagery, and asked myself if there was any objects or things or even words that seemed to have other layers of meaning. Uh, and for that, the word night seemed important. I kept asking myself, you know, 
what it meant to be acquainted with the night. What did that phrase mean and what did the night represent? And then based on that question, I went back to the poem and I tried to pay attention to words, images, and figures of speech um, and asked myself, you know, what these suggested about the significance of the night, what they told me about the night. And based on, you know, what was happening at a literal level, but also these, you know, word associations and these images, uh, I determined or concluded that at least based on my reading of the poem, the night was associated with darkness and gloominess and sadness. Um, and then it was also associated with loneliness um, and a sense of disconnection from other people. So as you read through the poems uh, for this week, I encourage you to go through a similar process. Uh, first, ask yourself what's happening at the literal level and make sure that you understand to the best of your ability what's you know, actually happening in the poem before you try to look too deep. And then after you've identified what's happening at the literal level, uh, you know, pay, then pay attention to um, these other elements and ask yourself if there's other objects or other things that seem to have other layers of meaning. And then once you've identified those things, then pay attention to the rest of these literary elements and the rest of the poem and, and try to glean based on these other words and these other images and these other figures of speech, um, what sort of additional significance those potential symbols might have. Uh, and just to give you a heads up, uh, the poems that you're reading for this week are first of all, Carl Sandburg's poem, Offense, which you can find on Blackboard and then Paul Lawrence Dunbar's poem, Sympathy, which you can find on Blackboard. And then finally, uh, a section of Song of Myself uh, by Walt Whitman. And there's a lot of parts to Song of Myself. It's a long poem. Uh, even in Literature Reportable Anthology, the textbook, I think it reprints um, at least a couple sections. And then if you try to look up the poem online, you'll see that there's also maybe multiple sections that pop up there. So the only part of the poem that I'm requiring you to read and that I'm going to be asking you to focus on in discussion and also in the quiz is section six. Uh, and this focuses on the grass. So if you see the speaker talking about grass, you know that you found the right section. So uh, I look forward to seeing what you have to say about these poems. Uh, and please let me know if you have any questions.